gentlemen, the President of the United States, Donald J. Trump. And I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the men who died, who gave that right to me. And I gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today. Cause there ain't no doubt. To the hills of Tennessee, across the plains of Texas, from sea to shining sea, from Detroit down to Houston, and New York to LA, where there's pride in every American heart. The people of Louisiana, you have been so great right from the beginning. Right from the beginning. And I'm thrilled to be back with thousands of loyal, rock-ribbed American patriots. That's what you are. That's what we are. You work hard. You pay your taxes. You raise your children. You follow our laws. You respect our police. You defend our values. And you stand strong for God, family, and country. Tomorrow, you will head to the polls, and you will vote to replace a liberal Democrat who has sold you out, John Bell Edwards, with a great new Republican governor. Now, this Saturday, you also have a not a bad football game coming up, right? Not a bad game. I guess they're both unbeaten. I was watching a little bit of a clip today. Your quarterback does not look too bad, does he, huh? Look too bad. Boom, boom, boom. But it's a great game, LSU and Florida. So here's what you do. So important. I want you to enjoy the game, but I don't really want you to enjoy the game if you don't vote first. You know why? Because you'll be sitting there watching some incredible football and you'll feel guilty. It will ruin your entire afternoon. So go out and vote and then go and enjoy the game the way it should be enjoyed. As you've seen, under Republican leadership, America is stronger than ever before. And that's what's happened. 
We've created 6 million new jobs and opened 10,000 new factories since my election. The United States has the hottest economy on Earth. You know, these prime ministers and presidents and kings and queens, and I hate to say it, sometimes dictators, but we take them as they come, right? We take them as they come, but they always start off, sir, congratulations on the great job you've done with the economy. Got the hottest numbers, got the hottest economy in the world. We got the number one economy anywhere in the world. And had our opponent gotten elected, you would right now be the number two economy to China, and we are now so far ahead. It will never happen if smart people are standing here. We've ended the war on American energy, and with your help right here in Louisiana, the United States is now the number one producer of oil and natural gas anywhere on the planet. And how about these Democrats? They want to get rid of oil. They want to get rid of natural gas. They want to go to wind, oh, darling. I just can't watch the show tonight. The wind, it just stopped blowing. I can't watch LSU in Florida. There's no wind today. I'm angry. I'm really angry at John Bell Edwards. He has not done the job. We are securing our borders, taking care of our great veterans, and restoring the unrivaled might of the U.S. military like never before. And by the way, and we're going to introduce them, but you have two great senators here tonight. You have great congressmen. We approved something called Veterans' Choice. The veterans now can go see a doctor outside of the VA if they have to wait for two weeks or three weeks or three days. They can go and they can see a doctor. We pay the bill. They get better. People were waiting for four, five, six, seven weeks. So our veterans were taking care of our veterans. Do you notice that with the veterans? Because a lot of veterans here. But do you notice? It used to be all the time, every time. Oh, there's a veteran. Where's the veteran? Right there. How are you, sir? He looks like a veteran, too. Not going to mess with him. Great. Thank you very much. But you notice we don't see the bad stories about the veterans. Now the fake news will go out all over the United States. They'll look. They'll look. NBC is one of the worst in the world. They'll look. They'll look for a veteran. They're going to find a veteran that's not 100 percent happy, and they're going to make him a star. But you notice, for a year and a half, we've been in great shape, right? They don't talk about the veteran. Get them out. Wow. You know what? Your police work fast. They work fast. They work fast. They don't mess around in Louisiana, do they, huh? Out. That was beautiful. I love to see it. Our police are great, law enforcement great. Doing an incredible job. But all of our nation's gains are put at risk by a rage filled Democrat Party that has gone completely insane. For nearly three years, Democrats have waged a non stop battle to overturn your vote, overrule your voice, override your values, and overthrow the results of the most spectacular election in the history of our country.
2016. But your senators and your congressmen, and frankly, the real senators and the real congressmen and women of this country, they're not standing for it. The good people of Louisiana will never, ever stand for it. It's a hoax. It's a hoax. The Democrats are fighting to restore the wretched political class that threw open our nation's borders, shipped away our jobs, sacrificed our wealth, surrendered our sovereignty, flooded our cities with drugs and crime, and bogged us down in one foreign war after another. The endless wars have to stop. Have to stop. We're directly taking on the unholy alliance of corrupt Democrat politicians, deep state bureaucrats, and the fake news media. There they are, right there. You know, it's really funny. I see all those red lights on. That means you're live, right? As soon as I start talking about the fake news, I see those lights go off so fast. But then they come back on. And you know why they come back on? Because last night, by far, all over cable, all over the place, the highest rated show was what we did in Minnesota, a state that we're going to win. That's why they come back on, because they have no choice. They may hate Trump, but they want to get those ratings. Hey, what's going to happen in 12, maybe 16 years, when I'm no longer president? See, I'm just driving up there. Their ratings are going to tank. I actually think they're going to endorse me. Because if they don't, can you imagine having Pocahontas as your president? Okay. Now, the real Pocahontas, we wouldn't have minded, but the fake Pocahontas, you can't have it. Or how about Sleepy Joe? Sleepy Joe. His son, who knows nothing about energy, unlike the people in this room, He flies into the Ukraine. He flies into Ukraine. He walks out with $168,000 a month, $3 million. Never, he doesn't know what a gasoline tank looks like. And they're paying him hundreds of thousands a month. Then he flies into China, and he takes out $1.5 billion. I got to tell you, you know, I just made a great China deal today for energy, for the farmers, for the banks, for so many, you know, technology, one of the greats. Phase one, it's a big phase. In fact, the biggest problem, it'll be 40 to $50 billion in farm purchases. I don't think our farmers can produce that much. I said, that's okay. You know, my people said, Sir, could we make it 20? I said, no, make it 50. Our farmers will buy more land, and they'll buy bigger tractors. Right? No, they actually said, I want my farmers, I love my farmers, I want them to come back to me. Sir, we can't produce this too much. It's too much, sir. It's too much. We can't produce that much wheat and corn and all the stuff, because I want to tell you, I got China to order a lot. And it's true. It's true. No, it's true. So China, in their record year, of course, they'll catch it within, you know, $2. He was $2 off. He gets a Pinocchio, although Schiff got four Pinocchios for making up what I said on a phone call. Shifty Schiff. But their biggest year was $16 billion in agri- That's a lot. 16 billion, that's a lot of corn, right? 16 billion was their biggest year. 
They're going to buy not 16, not 20, not 30, not 40. They're going to buy between 40 and 50 billion dollars worth of agricultural products. And my people said to me, sir, they can't do it. They cannot produce that much. I said, you know what? No, it's true. My people wanted to stop at 20. I said, I'm not stopping at 20. I want them to come back and say, sir, we can't do it. Because I love my farmers. But they're going to be out there busy. They'll be going. They'll be go they're going to be more tractors sold. And they're going to be bigger and better and more powerful. And they're going to be made by American companies like John Deere and Case and Caterpillar. So for your senators and your congressmen that are here, that was one hell of a deal. This is phase one. Phase one. You got to see these. And they are happy to do it. They are happy to do it. We had a great relationship. But I'll tell you, so let me get back to Biden. Right? Remember? Where's Hunter? You know, last night, I said, where's Hunter? It became like the hottest thing in the whole country. I just said, by the way, where's Hunter? He walked out of China, so he walks out with $1.5 billion. And I said, you know, those aren't the same guys that I've been dealing with from China for the last year and a half. Those guys don't give you $1.5 billion and you know nothing. That's not the same Chinese people. I want to meet those people. Instead of $50 billion, it would be $500 billion worth of corn. So it's a crooked deal. And the fake news is always covering up for Joe Biden. Right? The fake news. They go, while the claim is totally unsubstantiated, every single newscast, with me, any claim is OK. With them, while the claim is totally unsubstantiated. And I say, but it's not unsubstantiated. He took out a fortune out of Ukraine, knew nothing. Took out a fortune out of China. How tough is China? I called one of the biggest people on Wall Street, a friend of mine, really big, powerful guy, does this stuff. I said, let me ask you just one question. What are the chances of doing that? He said, zero. I said, so you're the biggest on Wall Street, Steve. Steve, you're the biggest. What are the chances you can do that? He said, even the big ones can't do that. But for a guy to walk in off the street with no experience, a bad track record, just got thrown out of the Navy, and he walks away with $1.5 billion, and then these people, these crooked people back there say, this is totally unsubstantiated. Can you imagine, John Kennedy, Bill, can you imagine if Don Jr. or if Eric Trump or if our beautiful Ivanka, she worked so hard. Can you imagine if they walked out with one and a half billion dollars? They wouldn't be saying totally unsubstantiated. They'd be saying, where's the nearest cell? This is a horrible thing. So it's a disgrace what's going on. It's a whole big fat disgrace. And it's very unfair to Republicans. But you know what? We're here, and they're not. Huh? The Democrats and the media, they're partners. They're partners, OK? You ever see in the, the word manufacture? It's never been used before for this. We're talking about the southern border. And they're talking about, in a manufactured crisis, they said it was not a crisis, that it was manufactured. When you had caravans, we stopped it. And the wall is being built like you've never seen before. Being built. But remember, a few months ago, in a manufactured crisis, ABC, NBC, in a manufactured crisis, ABC, again, manufactured, CNN, crooked as hell. In a manufactured crisis, manufactured, then you go to CBS. Ladies and gentlemen, in a manufactured 
This is a word that was never used, and yet every single network used it. Because you know what? It's collusion. It's collusion. That's the real collusion. With us, there was no collusion. That's the real collusion right there. They colluded, and they conspired to sabotage our incredible movement, and they want to deceive the American voter, and they want to hurt the American voter. And we had an election in the history of our country. There's never been a greater victory than the victory we had in 2016, and we're going to have a bigger one in 2020. They've been trying to stop us for more than three years with a lot of crap. You know, the first time I heard about Russia, they said, sir, do you know anything about Russia? No. Have you colluded with Russia? And I laughed. I thought they were kidding. And weeks would go by, and I'd hear somebody else come up. Sir, do you know anything about Russia? No. Not, no, I know where it is. I don't deal with it. I sold a house to a guy about 12 years ago. He was from Russia. That's a long time ago. No, I don't know. Then they come up again. Sure. This Russia keeps coming up. Do you know anything about it? This is the witch hunt. This is the insurance policy. For, you know, this, this was the insurance policy. Remember from the two lovers? If she doesn't win, we've got an insurance policy. These people are corrupt. These people are disgusting. The two lovers. And they put it on the FBI server so their spouses wouldn't find out because they didn't want to put it on their private. That didn't work out too well for Peter Strzok and Lisa Page, did it? Lisa, I love you. I love you, Lisa. I love you, Lisa. I love you so much I can't even see straightly. Lisa, she's going to win 100 million to nothing. But just in case, Lisa, my darling, I love you, God. Oh. Just in case she doesn't win, we've got an insurance policy essentially saying we're going to take him out. These are corrupt people, folks. And then she said, Peter, I love you. I love you so much. You're so great, Peter. Uh, I don't think she loves him too much anymore, do you think? I don't think she loves him. I hear the word is not too good. The word is she's not in love anymore. We've been living through this so-called insurance policy because they know we're putting a stop to their pillaging and their plundering and their hoaxes. The radical Democrats' policies are crazy, their politicians are corrupt, their candidates are terrible, and they know they can't win on Election Day, so they're pursuing an illegal, invalid, and unconstitutional bullshit impeachment. They're scammers and con artists, perpetrating hoaxes and witch hunts. A man like Greg Jarrett, great guy, he wrote a book, and the book tells you the whole story. Bestseller book. Greg Jarrett, great guy. So many. Mangino. I tell you. So many. He's not a lawyer, but he, he's better than the lawyers. He's called Street Smart. But these are great, so many great people. John Solomon should get the Pulitzer Prize. How about these fraudulent writers at the New York Times? They get Pulitzer Prize and they got it all wrong. They have to give back their Pulitzer Prize, but that's a fix also, isn't it, huh? I've just won the Pulitzer Prize for 
talking about Trump and Russia, but they were all wrong. Now, the people that were right, like Sean Hannity and Rush Limbaugh, Laura Ingram and Tucker Carlson, Judge Janine and Waters, my Waters. And frankly, the best show by far in the morning is Fox and Friends. Also got the best rating. And Lou Dobbs, how about Lou Dobbs? And Varney, he's great. You know, Varney's great. And Maria Bartiromo. And you know what? And, and there are many others, many others, many others. But they get it right. But why isn't John Solomon, why aren't these people getting the real Pulitzer Prize? Because they were right. They called it right. The Times, The Washington Post, they're dishonest, horrible, I think very, very bad for our country publications. It's a phony deal. So their writers get Pulitzer Prizes for getting it wrong, and the great writers that really got it. And I don't know them. I never even met some of these people. But the ones that really got it right, they go home empty-handed. It doesn't work that way. And the people see it, you know? The people see it. So some of the names that I mentioned, all of the names that I mentioned, and plenty that I didn't, I'll tell you, thank God we have them on our side. And in its own way, thank God that we have a thing called social media, because we get the word out. Like nobody has ever gotten the word out before. But it's called a witch hunt, the story of the greatest mass delusion in American political history. That's what it is. This is one of the great con jobs ever. We must never let it happen to another president. This should never be allowed to happen again. When Schiff goes out, and speaks before Congress. They never thought I was going to release the transcript of my call. Oh. And this whistleblower, what's going on with the IG? How come the IG brings a whistleblower forward? And the whistleblower who works now for Biden, did you hear this one came out yesterday? But the whistleblower comes out with a totally phony report on my phone call. But they never thought I'd release it, so they were going to be okay. Eight times quid pro quo, except it was no time. And if you listen to what they said, it, it sounded horrible. That's why I had to release it. I called up Ukraine. I said, do you mind? I had one of my people make a call. Do you mind if we release it? They said, what the hell is that all about? And by the way, the president of Ukraine yesterday came out, and he said, he did nothing wrong. What are you talking about? I think they look at our country and they think we're all crazy. They think we're crazy. But he said, really nice, the new president, good guy, and he got elected on an anti-corruption platform because Ukraine is, you know, Ukraine is known as a, unfortunately, very corrupt place, but they'll straighten it out. But he came out yesterday and he said so strongly, and the fake news hardly puts him on. Hardly puts him on. And he said it before. He said it to the United Nations. And his foreign minister said it so strongly. He said, there was nothing wrong with that call. There was nothing wrong. They don't even know what the hell we're talking about. But nobody thought I'd release the call. Probably nobody thought we had a transcript. So when I heard the viciousness, but here's the worst of all, worse than the whistleblower. Now, the whistleblower, what, this isn't a whistle. Why are we protecting a person that tells you things that weren't true? But Listen to this. So, shifty shift. Shifty, little Adam, little Adam shift. Adam, I've had you up to here. I've had you up to here. Little Adam shift. He comes out and he made up my conversation. And I was watching, fortunately, because a lot of people sort of think, like, oh, I guess that's what he said. I said, I never said that. And then when Pelosi, nervous, nervous Nancy, 
nervous, Nancy. Yeah. Nervous, Nancy. Nervous, Nancy. I used to think she loved the country. She hates the country. Because she wouldn't be doing this to the country if she didn't. She hates the country. Nancy Pelosi hates the United States of America because she wouldn't be doing this. And I'm telling you, foreign nations, foreign people looking at us, they honestly think we're nuts. And then you have presidents and saying nothing was wrong, the president of the country. That's in question. But Nancy Pelosi said, well, that's what he said, isn't it? But she was angry as hell when she got to read the transcript because she said, wait a minute, that's not what I was told. But she was stuck. She was stuck. But think of a guy who makes up a phone call, makes up my words, viciously says eight quid pro quos. In other words, you got to do this or we're not going to do that. And there were none. There were none. They couldn't believe it. When I released that call, I would have loved to have seen their faces. And then he goes before the United States Congress and before the American public, and he makes up the story of what I said, made it horrible and vicious, not even close. It's not like, gee, he missed a couple of words. He missed every word. He missed every — he made it up. It was fiction. It's unbelievable. And honestly, I don't know, Congressman, but are you immune from something like that? That should be a crime. That should be a crime. Anyway, that's why tomorrow I need you to send the radical Democrat establishment a loud and clear message. You are going to fire your Democrat governor who's done a lousy job and send a great Republican to the governor's mansion. When John Bell Edwards ran for office, he made your state a sacred promise that he would not raise your taxes. Then he got elected and broke that promise by ramming through the largest tax hike in your state's history, John Bell Edwards. And you know, because the state obviously likes me, I think I won like by a lot. I don't even know why the hell you like a guy that lives on Fifth Avenue, but I like you, too. But I used to go to construction sites. My father would be putting up houses or a building, and I'd go and I'd work with the workers. And that's when I realized these are the people I love. These are the people. These are the real people. I know them all. I know the good ones. I know the bad ones. I like those workers. But John Bell Edwards lied to the people of Louisiana, while every other state is making massive job gains, and you don't even know this. Edwards' terrible policies are killing jobs across your state. Edwards is now trying to destroy Louisiana's energy sector. You know that, right? With threats and lawsuits inspired by the radical left-wing Washington activists and Democrats what he's doing, right? John Bell Edwards, not good, goes around saying, I like Trump very much. He's very good. But behind my back, he doesn't like me. A friend of mine knows him well. He said, behind your back, he's not so good. John Bell Edwards was a superdelegate for crooked Hillary Clinton. And he supported. By the way, it looks like Bernie lost his chance, right? Bernie was hitting a baseball today to show how strong he was. There just wasn't a lot of bad head speed. Bernie, get better fast. But Bernie, I just like, get better. Get better fast. It's the only time I've ever said anything good about him. But, but boy, did they take advantage of him four years ago. And he let him do it. You can't do that. You can't let people take advantage. He figured, I'll wait four years. It's a little bit tough. But it looks like, you know, when Bernie gets out, which seems inevitable, 
When Bernie gets out, it looks like those will go to your radical leftist Elizabeth Warren, right? And that, unfortunately, will be the end of Sleepy Joe, because I would really probably most like to run again. I don't know. It's sort of anybody. I don't care. Whoever it is, just put them out there. Let's get this thing going. But John Bell Edwards supported far-left candidates like Stacey Abrams, our friend Brian Kemp. He did a number on Stacey Abrams. She's still saying, what happened? What happened? She had Oprah. You know, Oprah used to be a very good friend of mine. She used to go to Mar-a-Lago, a place I have in Palm Beach. She loved Mar-a-Lago. She loved the key lime pie. She did. No, so do I. She loved the key lime pie. But she used to go. She loved me until I decided to run for office. But she went to Georgia, and she campaigned for Stacey. And Obama went, and Michelle Obama went, and they campaigned. And all Brian Kemp had was Donald Trump. And we had a rally at the airport, and there were 55,000 people at that rally. That was the day before, maybe two days before the election. I said, Brian, congratulations, you're going to win. You're going to win. And he won by two and a half points, which was amazing. Every star, everybody went down there for Stacey Abrams. Louisiana cannot take four more years of a liberal Democrat governor raising your taxes, killing your jobs, attacking your industries, and taking money from open borders extremists. How about these people that want open borders? Let everybody come in. Let them all come in. Tomorrow, you've got to vote John Bell Edwards out. And the way you do that is before the game, you got to get going. You got to just leave it an hour early, maybe even a half an hour. Ten minutes, I don't care. Be late for the game, I couldn't care less. But you got to vote before the game. And what it is, just so you understand, it's a runoff. So if he doesn't get 50 percent, then one of our two great candidates will win that. And it'll be John Bell Edwards against one of our two great — and they're both great people. They're great. Ralph Abraham and Eddie Risponi. Ralph Abraham and Eddie are both pro-jobs, pro-worker, pro-family, pro-life, and they're pro-Louisiana energy, if that's okay. You know, I was here a couple of months ago, and they opened the biggest LNG plant I have ever seen in my life, right? Were you there? And they've been trying to get this thing approved for years and years and years, and they couldn't. And then President Trump came along, and I got those permits so fast for them. These big energy executives were sitting back, and they couldn't get it approved. Nothing they could do would get it approved. Your governor was lousy. They were all lousy. Nobody could help. That thing was so dead, and I came along, and I got it approved. And then the consultants probably called up these big energy executives. Sir, we were able to get it approved for you. I never even saw these people. But I know it was a good thing. And they probably got millions in consulting fees. I'd rather give it to you people, or I'd rather give it to something, charity. But they came along. I could just see nobody knows consultants better than me. They make the environmental rules tough, so you have to pay them a lot of money to skirt your way through. But it takes years and years and millions and millions. So I got that plant approved, and I came down two months ago, right? Two and a half months ago, cut a ribbon. I've never seen anything so big. And now they're going to double it up, I understand, and they're building an even bigger one in another location of Louisiana. Right? right? They will protect your Second Amendment, our two guys. And John Bell won't. 
John Bell Edwards, when it gets close and they start calling from Washington and Schumer and Pelosi call, we want you to get rid of the Second Amendment. He's 100 percent going to drop the Second Amendment. You're not going to have the rights that you have or anywhere close. John Bell Edwards will not protect your Second Amendment. Our guys support your police. They defend the great workers and families of this state. If you want a governor who will fight for your values, get out tomorrow and cast your ballot for Eddie or Ralph. It's very important. Eddie and Ralph, where are you? Eddie and Ralph, where are you? Come up, come up here. You know what? So here's the problem. We're on live television all over the place. They don't like this because they go up, they say, put Trump back on, he gets better ratings. Let me tell you, these guys are the greatest. Here's the thing. I'm going to have me say like a quick minute or two, but you're not allowed to hit your Republican opponent. You're only allowed to hit John Bell Edwards because he deserves to be. Is this incredible? Is this incredible? Yes! We need someone to do for Louisiana what President Trump has done for the USA. We need a conservative. We need a businessman. We need someone that's not beholden to special interests. We need someone that will fight for Louisiana. That's why I'm in this race, folks. Let's go get it. Let's fire John Bell Edwards. And let's thank our president for coming down here to help us. I just want to thank the president for coming to Louisiana and making Louisiana. We need him to make Louisiana great again and myself. Mr. President, we thank you. Thank you so much for taking care of our veterans, for rebuilding our military, and for protecting our southern border. And Mr. President, I dropped a resolution to expel Nancy Pelosi from the House of Representatives. Go America, go Louisiana! Fellas, very much appreciate it. Okay, you got to do it tomorrow. Let's go get a runoff, and one of these two guys are fantastic. Just vote tomorrow for the entire Republican ticket. Just vote. We're also delighted to be joined by two really good friends of mine. These are warriors. These are warriors. Different types of people. But equally, I mean, they fight for you, and they love this state, and they love this country. One, he has a strange name when I first heard. He called me up. Sir, they said, there's a man named John Kennedy on the phone. I said, who? He's running for the Senate in a state that likes you a lot. I said, where? Louisiana. And I said, let me check it out. And it was true. There was a man named John Kennedy, a very successful guy, a brilliant guy. You're not going to know what this means, because I'm a big, like, student. I like academics, believe it or not. People don't know. My uncle was a professor for 35 years or something at MIT. I like that stuff. He went to Oxford. Oxford's, like, as good as it gets. And he was a great student at Oxford. You know, he puts on that country stuff all the time. But I want to tell you, and we know the country's smarter than the other guys anyway. But so John Kennedy calls it, I'd love to have your support. I'd really love it if I could. But uh, I said, John, to me, you're the real John Kennedy. You're the real deal. And we came down. It was, I'll never forget, 
It was a Friday night, and it was this massive airplane hangar someplace. I don't know where the hell. All I know is in your great state. And we had thousands and thousands of people show up. And I looked at him, and I liked him, and I looked at that crowd. I said, you know what? I think you're going to win tomorrow. The election was on a Saturday, and John Kennedy won by a lot. It was a great thing, and a great thing for our country. Where is John Kennedy? John, come here. Come here. Come here, John. And then we have another guy. Anytime I talk about health care, anytime I want to know anything about medical, anytime I want to know anything about taking care of people, I call a man named Bill Cassidy. He's incredible. What a heart. What a heart. Come on up here, John. Come here, John. Oxford. Is this incredible or what? I mean, is this Louisiana? God. I told you, Donald J. Trump loves Louisiana like the devil loves sin. Mr. President, thank you. Now, Mr. President, earlier I gave him a quiz. I imagined you were running against Joe Biden. And I asked him a set of questions. Who's more likely to secure the southern border, Joe Biden or Donald? But there's one question I forgot to ask him. Who promised to build a new Calcasieu River bridge? men, two great men, two great Americans. Another man who's very brave, he was really in bad condition. I was at the hospital the night that he was expected to die. He wasn't looking too good that night, I have to tell you. I went there and the doctor said, it's almost impossible to save him. And Honestly, I saw him today. I swear, I think he's better looking now than he was two years ago. The greatest thing, he was playing baseball. He was shot while they were practicing. He was shot at second base. Steve Scalise, right? Steve. But the greatest story. The greatest story. So he's recovering, and I mean, he really, I don't want to go into it, but he, he had a lot of damage. And he went out and he played in the baseball game like six months later, seven months later. He could hardly stand up. And they had him at second base. He didn't have big range. Like I'd say range would be about six inches. <laughs> and the first batter rips a ground ball right at him. I said, oh, this is going to be terrible. <laughs> and he got down and he got that ball and he caught it. And he threw it to first. He could barely throw. He threw it to first. And the batter was out. I said, that's like a miracle, the first pitch of the game. I said, how tough is that? I don't think anybody else would have been able to stop that sucker. That was hard hit. But he's a great friend of mine, and he's another one. He loves your state. He loves you so much. And he's really a brave guy. Steve Skellis. Steve. And then we have some other great warriors, great congressmen. Thanks, Steve. Great, great congressmen. Mike Johnson, Clay Higgins. Come on up, Bob. Garrett Graves. Garrett Graves. 
What a group. They're warriors. Thank you, fellas. Thank you. They make our life so much easier in Washington. We can always count on Louisiana, can't we say that? You have a man who's your Attorney General, Jeff Landry, is terrific. And Secretary of State, Kyle Ardwin. Kyle Ardwin. And you have an Agriculture Commissioner, Mike Strain, well-known all over the country. And Insurance Commissioner, Jim Donilon. Thank you, Jim. Thanks. And Solicitor General, Liz Merrill. Thank you. Thank you. Nice hat. And we are going to do something that a lot of presidents and a lot of people have said, and you need it, and all the work is done. It's getting ready for final approvals. That's the hard part in many cases, not the money. It's the approvals. It's all done. We're going to rebuild the I-10 Calcasieu River Bridge. We're all set, right? Right? We're going to build it. Calcasieu. Finally, I'd like to welcome the winners of the 2019 Little League World Series Championship. So I have to thank They're Louisiana's own River Ridge Little League baseball team. But I have to tell you the crazy story. So I'm in the look at these handsome kids. It drives me crazy how good looking they are. Look at them. So kids, stay there for a second, because I got to tell you. So I'm in the White House today. And we had the Little League Girls Championship team, and they were incredible. And they come from North Carolina, and they were undefeated. I think they were like 20 and 0. And then, of course, I got into a competition. Who's better, you or them? And one of these guys gave them a 25% chance. I don't know if you're very uh, popular on your team anymore. That's a pretty good. But. They were incredible, and they had a tremendous team. North Carolina. And then I said, so you're from North Carolina? And then the guys came in, and I said, where are you from? They said, Louisiana. And then one guy, he's like six foot two, he's 12 years old. And he's the pitcher. And he throws the ball, they say, one of the Young guys was telling me, 75 miles per hour. I said, no wonder you won. The other team can't see the pitch. That's pretty good, 75. I think he's being recruited by the entire major leagues already. He's 12 years old. But I said to him, so where are you from? They said, Louisiana. I said, you won't believe this. I'm going on a beautiful plane called Air Force One, world's most beautiful plane. I'm going to a place called Louisiana. Do you want to come? Huh? Huh? And they looked at their parents. Actually, I didn't want to take their parents to heck with their parents. I didn't want to take their coaches, but their coaches are great, and their coaches are here, and the coaches, raise your hand, coaches. In fact, you come up with them. But they won the whole deal all over the world. They're the number one team. And there's like, Somebody told me they sort of were like thousands of teams all over the world. And they won. And I got so used to watching Japan win. You know, for years, Japan won. I think they ended up beating Curacao, right? Curacao. But Japan would win, and it was always a little controversial. You know, there'd be a guy who's 12. Of course, I, I'm not saying this. I, he's 12, but he seemed to be 18. But I'm only kidding, Prime Minister Abi, because Abi's a friend of mine, so he'll understand my, the way I kid. He threw the ball, this one kid, about 109 miles an hour, faster than any major leaguer, and he was 12. He had the greatest muscle tone anybody's ever seen for a 12-year-old. But Japan always did great. But this year, you have the world champions, Little League. 
from Louisiana. So congratulations to Will Andre, Gavin Berry, come on up here, kids, Jeffrey Curtis, Ryan Dara, Derek Dulat, Marshall Luke, Connor Perrot, Ryder Plancher, Egan Prather, Reese Rosell, Alton Shorts, Peyton Spedoni, and Stan Wiltz. Boy, I'll tell you what. I just said, does anybody want to say something? They said, no, no, no. But you and I know they don't choke. We know you don't choke. You don't know what the word choke means, right? You're like 6'2 and 75. Come here, no. Come on. Come here. I want to represent this guy. Somebody's going to make a lot of money representing him who weighs 350 pounds and can't get out of his seat. You ready for the major league someday? Yeah. What do you throw at 72, 75? And did you do pretty well? He kept them pretty well shut out. They couldn't see the ball, right? And what did you win the last score? What was the score? Eight to nothing, right? Eight to nothing. So you didn't pitch a bad game, right? Thanks, fellas. Thank you. I don't think they want to leave. <laughs> you go ahead. Go ahead right back. Thank you. Thank you, kids. Great job. Thank you, fellas. Champions, there's no choke. They don't choke, and we don't choke. We don't like chokers. With the help of everyone here tonight, America is booming again and winning like never before. We're winning. We're putting America first. You haven't heard that in a long time. Seven million Americans have been lifted off of food stamps since our great election. Unemployment just reached its lowest rate in over 50 years. Unemployment for African Americans, Hispanic Americans, and Asian Americans have hit the all-time lowest rates in the history of our country. Wages are rising fast, and they are growing twice as fast for low-income workers. They have the biggest percentage increase, low-income workers. 1.3 million fewer children live in poverty today than when I was elected. 1.3 million people. I've cut a record number of job-killing regulations. We passed the largest package of tax cuts and reforms in American history. Nearly a trillion dollars has already been poured back home. It's coming back in. Remember, people would have their money over there. They couldn't bring it back in. It was prohibitive. The legislation was impossible. We got rid of it. Over a trillion dollars now has been brought back in, and it's being spent building in the United States instead of building overseas. Meanwhile, the Democrats running for president have pledged to abolish all American production of oil and natural gas. Oh, that's wonderful. In other words, Democrats are promising to annihilate 
Louisiana's economy. But we're never going to let them do that. And I have to tell you, this isn't a campaign speech because we're going to win it by like 35 points. One of your senators said, one of your senators just said, this is really, I came here to get you to go out to vote tomorrow. I don't want to get too carried away with this. But one of your senators just told me, he said, sir, you don't ever have to come back to Louisiana. We have your back. Go to those states that are close. Go to Michigan. Go to Pennsylvania. Go to North Carolina. I don't think they're very close. You know, the other night in North Carolina, two weeks ago, we won two congressional races. They thought we'd lose one or the other was going to be maybe a one-point, two-point victory. We absolutely won them by so much nobody ever saw. I did something like this the night before the election. We did this. It was the same kind of an arena. It was packed. And that was North Carolina. I think we're going to do great there. I think we're going to do great in Pennsylvania. We won Pennsylvania last time. The first time in many years. We won Michigan. We won South Carolina and Florida and Wisconsin. Oh, we won Wisconsin. Wisconsin, we need the USMCA. We got to get that approved. We got to get Nancy to approve the USMCA. If she does it, that really, you know, we call them the do-nothing Democrats, and it's really the do-nothings. But we'll do it after we take over the House if it doesn't get done there. The last administration betrayed our nation's energy workers. Now we are proudly promoting American energy independence. We're independent. I approve the Keystone XL pipeline and the Dakota Access Pipelines. 48,000 jobs by first week in office. I signed executive orders to speed up the construction of critical energy infrastructure, which you people are so well aware of. And I opened up ANWR, the largest drilling site, perhaps they think anywhere in the world. It's in Alaska. They couldn't get it done. Even Ronald Reagan could not get it done. We got it done. Bill and John and your congressman, we got it done. We're also reversing decades of ruinous trade policies that ransack the communities of this state. Louisiana lost one in four manufacturing jobs after the twin disasters of NAFTA, one of the worst trade deals ever made in history, which we're replacing, and China's entrance into the World Trade Organization, probably the worst trade deal ever made. Now we are replacing NAFTA with the brand-new U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement. And the USMCA will be a massive victory for farmers and ranchers and growers and workers all across the state. I don't know if the farmers are going to need it after China. They may say, we can't do any more, please, please. We don't want any more, Mr. President. They'll be calling me from Nebraska. They'll be calling me from Iowa. Remember I used to say it? We're winning so much. Please, please, Mr. President, we don't want to win so much. We're not used to it. They'll be calling me from Nebraska. They'll be calling me from Iowa. They'll be calling me from that beautiful midsection, which was so beautiful, bright red. You know, you had a little blue on the edges. And if there was honest voting, I really think I would have won that, too. But there's not. There's not. Whatever they tell you, there's not. But they'll be calling, please, we don't need any more. We can't do it. We're going crazy. We're working too hard. They want us too much. Isn't that a nice feeling, though? Isn't that great? Democrats in Congress should get back to work and pass the USMCA immediately. We've taken the toughest ever action to confront China's decades of abuse, and now we're getting along with China. This was a great day. This was the day. I don't know if anybody saw it. In fact, I was almost late for you because I was with China. I said, I'm not going to be late for Louisiana, even if it means standing up China a little bit. It was between Louisiana and China I had to take Louisiana. But today I was with the Vice Premier of China, one of the most powerful men in the world, highly respected. 
And we made that significant progress toward a new deal. It's getting papered now. And who knows, you know, getting papered, but it's going to happen because they want it. They want it badly. And it's going to end the mistreatment of American workers and companies. It's going to be so great for this country. It's going to be great for China, too. We will not rest until we've achieved economic fairness and justice for the American worker and for American people. On issue after issue, Democrats have put the needs of foreign citizens ahead of our own citizens. It's true. You know, we protect borders of other countries. We don't protect our own borders. But I want to thank Mexico. The president of Mexico is great. 27,000 Mexican soldiers are on our border. And you see the numbers? They plummeted. 27,000. Think of it. All because the Democrats wouldn't approve simple changes to what we call the loopholes. They're loopholes. It's a good name because they're just absolute mistakes made years ago. And the Democrats, in 15 minutes, we could solve the problem. So Mexico has helped us more at our border than the Democrats. Honestly, they're terrible. And all they want to do is this foolishness. They don't want to pass anything. All they want to do is play these games because they're desperate to win in 2020. And instead, you see what's happening with the polls? It's turning the other way because people see their game. The voters are smart. In a recent Democrat debate, every single Democrat presidential candidate raised their hand in favor of giving free government health care to illegal aliens. And then you wonder why they come to America. Why wouldn't they come? Free health care, free education, free everything. And I jokingly said one time, and everybody then gets a Rolls Royce. And the fake news said, President Trump lied. He said that the illegal immigrants all get a Rolls Royce. They don't have a lot of sense of humor. That's the problem with this press. What a bunch of dopes. Free Rolls Royce. If President told a lie, they don't get a Rolls Royce. So I'm only kidding about the Rolls Royce. I just don't want to have a story. You know, I'll have a bad story. I did it again. I promised the Rolls I, I was just kidding. The Democrat vision for America is to rob American taxpayers to fund socialism for the entire world. If you don't want Democrats to raid your health care, steal your money, overcrowd your schools, and overwhelm your communities, then you have only one choice. You have to go out tomorrow, vote Republican, get John Bell Edwards the hell out of office. In everything I do, I never forget that I am not president of the world. I am president of the United States of America. We reject globalism, and we embrace patriotism. We believe that every American citizen, no matter their background, deserves a government that is loyal to them. The Democrat Party and the extreme radical left are trying to abolish the distinction between citizens and non-citizens. In many cases, people that come into our country illegally used to be treated then, I, I mean, they were treated better than our vets. Hey, we have a great vet. We have a number of great vets. People that came in illegally were treated better than our vets. They're treated better than our own citizens. Not anymore. Just recently, New York City — I love New York City. we got some real bad leadership over there now. New York City — you know, the mayor ran for president. He left. He got zero. How do you get zero? It's impossible. There's got to be one strange person out there that votes. He, he got zero. And New York wanted him to do so well. They were backing him because they didn't want him back as mayor. 
They would have even said, let him be president, just keep him the hell away from New York. But New York City, the same mayor, issued a rule that the use of the term illegal alien can now be punishable with a fine of up to $250,000. Can you imagine? Can you imagine you're a hard worker, you're saving your money? You just built up that 250000 after 15 years of construction work. You got 250000 you're rich. You feel better than Trump ever did. And you just happen to, in one of those bad moments, use the word illegal alien. And they say, thank you very much. I want your money. Hey, give me that 250000 you worked your ass off for. The left's attack on free speech goes hand in hand with their attack on America's borders. The radical Democrats' assault on American freedom and American citizenship will now end. Democrats also continue to encourage foreign interference in our elections by refusing to support a simple and beautiful thing called voter ID. Maybe I can ask our senators and congressmen, put a bill. It is so popular. You know, if you want to go out and buy groceries, you need identification. If you want to do almost anything, you need identification. The only thing you don't need identification for is to vote. The most important single thing you're doing to vote, you don't need it. You know why? Because they cheat like hell, that's why. Maybe John and Bill could put out a voter ID. I never spoke to them about it. You guys believe in that, don't you? I think so. They could put it out. They'll do it. Oh, you have it in the state. Do you have a strong federal application? I love it. That's why I love this state. That's why I won by so much. Oh, that's so great. Listen to this. Now I know why I won by so much. Because people couldn't cheat. That's great. Will you have it for tomorrow's election? Yes, I love this state, it's so great. But don't change, put it out for every other state, because most states don't have it. We believe only American citizens should vote in American elections, and that's not what's happening. You go out to California and you see what's happening out there, it's a disgrace. The voter abuse, it's a disgrace what's happening in California. Democrats even support deadly sanctuary cities which defy federal law enforcement and unleash violent criminal aliens onto your streets. Republicans believe our cities should be sanctuaries for law-abiding Americans, not for criminal aliens. And we will always stand with the heroes of ICE, Border Patrol and our great law enforcement that got that person out of here so fast. Right? Last night, they had cops love Trump, and I said cops love Trump, and Trump loves cops. It's true. The Democrat Party has never been farther outside the mainstream. Honestly, they've gone crazy. They've gone crazy. They're not doing anything. They're just evil. It's like they're, they're, they're crazed lunatics. Every Democrat running for president is pushing a health care agenda that would end Medicare as we know it, betraying our nation's seniors. My administration will always protect Medicare for our beloved seniors, and we will always protect patients with pre-existing conditions. And we'll also protect your private insurance. We have 180 million people. Who has private insurance here? A lot of people. Oh. How would you like it if they take it away so that you can walk to a hospital emergency room someday? You go to a hospital emergency room because you have a cold. It's not good. We've taken swift action to lower the price of health care for working families with new options that cost up to 60 percent less than failed Obamacare. And we got rid of the individual mandate in Obamacare, the most, the most unpopular, unfair thing. That's where you pay a fortune 
for the privilege of not having to pay a fortune for your health care. So you're paying not to have to pay. It's terrible. Anyway, I got rid of it. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. That was not easy. Our ambitious campaign to reduce the price of prescription drugs has produced the largest decline in drug prices in more than 50 years. You see that. And we're bringing them down much lower. And we're even going to give our states, you know, the drug industry has it pretty well wired. Drugs are very expensive. Outside in other countries, you can buy the exact same drug for 50 percent, 60, 70 percent less than you pay. Same drug, same factory, same company. So it's not like a different. I just gave Ron DeSantis, governor of Florida, and I'm giving other governors the right to go to Canada and other states and other countries, other countries, to buy the drugs because they pay much less. We can cut our prices by 50, 60, 70 percent in some cases. So we're giving states the rights to go to other countries and make a deal on drugs. It's easier than going through this horrible system where the Democrats refuse to allow you to do anything to cut the price of drugs. They don't want to let you do it. To help patients with life-threatening conditions, we passed, I love it, Right to Try. So if you're terminally ill, if you're very sick, we have the best doctors and labs, technicians in the world. They have so many different things, but it'll be four, five, six years. You couldn't get it. You know why? You're terminally ill, and they're telling them, we don't want to make you sick. You're terminally ill. You're going to be around for four weeks. And they say, we can't give you this drug because it may hurt you. For 50 years, they've been trying to get it. Not that easy. You know, I did it pretty quickly. I said, you know what we'll do? We'll do these, like, little disclosures that says you're not going to sue the government. You're not going to sue the drug company. You're not going to — I have them coming. But people come in now, they sign. And I tell you, it's a miracle. So many people have been saved. It's incredible. It's incredible. They don't have to wait six years. They'll be gone. Right to try. Proud of it. Virtually every top Democrat also now supports late-term abortion, ripping babies straight from the mother's womb right up to the moment of birth. That's why I've asked Congress to prohibit extreme late-term abortion, because Republicans believe that every child is a sacred gift from God. <laughs> Democrats are now the party of high taxes, high crime, open borders, late-term abortion, socialism, and blatant corruption. The Republican Party is the party, the American worker, the American family, and the American dream. That's what they want. Republicans want the American dream. We have confirmed 100 — people don't even believe this — record stuff. One — Obama gave me 142. 142 federal judges. I said, how many do I have? I figured it was none. So you have 142. I said, you got to be kidding. Within two months, we'll have about 182 federal judges, including Court of Appeals, to apply the laws written, including two great Supreme Court justices, Neil Gorsuch and Brett Kavanaugh. Our historic investment in rebuilding the military has included $25 million to a place called Boxdale Air Force Base. You ever hear of it? Right here in Louisiana. And $40 million to Naval Air Station Joint Reserve Base New Orleans, right? And our warriors have now more ammunition more missiles, more rockets, more tanks, more fighter jets, and more of everything our troops need to defend our nation than we have ever had before. And it's all made in the USA. At the same time, we're putting a stop to the endless wars we have to bring our folks back home. 
War is going on for 19 years, and we're really police agents. We're not fighting wars. We're just policing. And we can't do it. Not fair. Not fair. Other countries should help us. They don't treat us right, but they're starting to. You watch. Going into the Middle East is one of the worst decisions ever made in the history of our country. It's like quicksand. We spent $8 trillion in the Middle East, and then we want to fix up a highway or we want to build your bridge. And they say, sir, it's a lot of money. We just spent $8 trillion in the Middle East. We got nothing for it. We're slowly and carefully bringing our great soldiers and warriors back home. After decades of rebuilding foreign countries, we are finally rebuilding our own country. For years, you watched as your politicians apologized for America. Remember that not so long ago? Not so long ago, remember bowing? We don't like to bow. Now you have a president who is standing up for America, and we are standing up for the great people of Louisiana. The path to victory begins with a giant win tomorrow right here in the great state of Louisiana. With your support, we will show the corrupt Democrats in Washington that the American people are not backing down. We will never, ever forget. We will send a terrific new Republican governor to Baton Rouge. So tomorrow, before the game, get your friends, get your family, get your neighbors, and get out and vote Republican. These are two great people. Vote for Ralph, vote for Eddie, get out and vote Republican. With your help, we will lift millions more of our great citizens from welfare to work, from dependence to independence, and poverty to prosperity. Together, we will elect more Republicans to Congress to create an immigration system that protects American jobs, wages, and families. And we'll be able to tell Mexico and their great 27,000 soldiers that are doing this as a favor to your president. We're not paying for it. We will tell them, thank you very much. Your services are no longer needed. We will enact trade deals that result in more products proudly stamped with the four beautiful words, made in the USA. We will achieve new breakthroughs in science and medicine finding new cures for childhood cancer, and ending the AIDS epidemic in America. You didn't know that this could be done. It will be ended in 10 years. We have the medicines to do. Can you believe that? And it could have been started a long time ago, and they didn't do it, but I'm doing it. We've already started. 10 years. And above, and above all, we will, we will never stop, stop fighting for the sacred values that bind us together as one hey, yep, I got America. It. We support, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. Hey, yep, I gotcha. We stand with the incredible heroes of law enforcement. They are great. Okay, do you think you guys are coming to me, or is it a piece about the end? Will it, in is it a debate on how many seconds? And I think <laughs> they do. We saw it last <laughs> night in Minnesota. We, we believe in the dignity of work and the sanctity of life. We, we believe, believe that faith and family, I'm under the camera. I'm just squatting down because he said they were, taking, the true they were still taking way. cuts. We believe that children okay. should be taught to love our country, okay. honor our history, and to always respect our great American flag.
And here in Louisiana and all across this land, we live by the words of our national motto, in God we trust, that will never be taken down. We stand on the shoulders of American patriots who crossed the oceans, settled the continent, tamed the wilderness, revolutionized industry, pioneered science, won two world wars, defeated fascism and communism, and we're going to defeat socialism and put a man on the face of the moon. Proud citizens like you help build this country, and together we are taking back our country. We are returning power to you, the American people. With your help, your devotion, and your drive, we are going to keep on working, we are going to keep on fighting, and we are going to keep on winning, winning, winning. We are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. America is thriving like never before. And ladies and gentlemen of Louisiana, the best is yet to come. Get out and vote tomorrow. Together, we will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you, Louisiana. Get out and vote tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.